What a great time it is in our community to celebrate and recognize our local history, not only in West Bloomfield Township, but in our Tri-Cities as well, in Kegel Harbor, Orchard Lake Village, and Sylvan Lake, all of which is collected from the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society and others in our community doing their part to preserve our history, including in the prettiest little city in the state of Michigan, where you may have seen this person on your screen on CivicCenterTV.com, Helen Jane Peters, the Sylvan Lake historian, doing her part to preserve the long and storied history of the prettiest little city in Michigan. She joins us now on The Splash Live to talk about the importance of preserving our local history and how you can do a little bit of what she's doing each and every day. Helen Jane, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's always fun to be here to talk about Sylvan Lake. What could be better? Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's a really interesting story that Sylvan Lake has. And, and you have uh, done your part for a number of years to preserve a lot of that local history and to also help the community get familiar with that history. And it's important right now because we're about to celebrate 50 years of the Greater West Bloomfield Historic Society, which also covers the city of Sylvan Lake. And so it kind of all goes back to one general sort of topic, which is the importance of preserving our local history. Helen Jane, even in communities as small as, as our four close-knit communities, why is preserving our history important? Well, <clears throat> I wish I had started earlier because um, it's important for people to know what happened before we came here. And it's also important to save this history in our um, in our archives, along with pictures and stories. People love to hear stories about what happened before we were here. Another thing, they love to hear about their own house, their own property. Who lived here before I came here? And things like that. Um, our school, our community center, our um, access to the lake, our parks. It's all wonderful to save. And how did our park come about? And did we have to buy this property? We are very fortunate in Sylvan Lake that we have all of our parks have been donated to the city, which is just fabulous. So uh, that it, it's just exciting to me to save this history for others to read, especially down the road when, <clears throat> You know, when things just continue to happen, and we want to save that. Yeah, uh, Sylvan Lake recently celebrating its 100th anniversary as a community just a couple of years ago. And they did that at the Sylvan Lake Community Center, which you know, people may drive through Sylvan Lake, whether they've lived there for years and are going to a community event or they're exploring, maybe moving to what is called the prettiest little city in the state of Michigan. They see that building, but they don't understand that even that location has some serious, serious backstory to it, not just in Sylvan Lake, but all across Metro Detroit. That's right. In 1890, uh, I have to figure out how many years ago that was, Merrill B. Mills bought that property and then he turned it into, he wanted to turn it into a resort area. But the land was out on the point and it was a beautiful piece of property. He, he actually, he ended up buying all of our property in Sylvan Lake, subdivided it and sold lots. But before that, he developed the Sylvan Lake Inn. In 1893, it was built for $25,000, which would be millions today. It was absolutely beautiful. Victorian, a beautiful building. And people came as from as far away as Chicago to come and stay here because of our lake, partly. And it was quiet. It was serene. They must have had wonderful food. It, and the building incorporated everything. It incorporated a bowling alley and a, a riding range and golf course and billiard parlor, which was against the law at the time, and things like that. Um, so that was here first. But then the inn burned down 10 years later in 1903. It was very sad. But he donated the land at that time to the Detroit Free Press Fresh Air Camp. And the camp was there for 55 years. The children came from all over Southeast Michigan to uh, spend a week or two at the camp. Many of them had never been out of the city of Detroit. It must have been thrilling for them to go swimming, 
and hiking and playing games and just having a wonderful time outdoors without looking at cement all the time. So that was there until 1960, I'm going to say. And then the free press gave that property to the city of Sylvan Lake. What a gift. It was fabulous. The, it, the, since it's an island, there you can see the lake on both sides of the property. Four glorious acres on the lake, both sides of the lake. So the, the, the um, city deterred, and actually it was supposed to be used for um, a community, a community um, building where everyone could use it. So we took their dining hall and, and activities building and turned it into our community center, which we used until 19, no, 2008. 2007, it was raised and a brand new building was erected. It is a fabulous building. We have the old sign from um, the camp that's above the fireplace, excuse me, that is uh, in the stone fireplace like it had been at the camp. And lots of, um, not as many as I'd like, but a lot of historical pictures in the entrance talking about how people would, uh, about the camp and the inn. And I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, and you're not because this is just so interesting. And this is something, this is why history is important. You walk by the community center, like I had said when, when I set up that question for you, Helen Jane, but then you're telling that story and you walk in the community center, you see these pictures, you don't understand necessarily just from that one image, all the stories that went into that time, how this property in Sylvan Lake, a glorious place in the city with so much history behind it, how many stories there are there. And then even little affects in the building, even in City Hall, the city, uh, the story of, of City Hall. These are all the memories we collect over time and that we preserve over time. And Helen Jane, we have a picture that you sent us this morning. This is, this is so cool. Uh, in your home, in, you have a closet specifically dedicated to all your collections of Sylvan Lake history that you will, uh, you've said you will eventually be donating to the city of Sylvan Lake. Calvin, if we can show that picture uh, on our screen here, a quick a moment. Helen Jane's library at home. Uh, I'll give you a moment because it's so cool. There's binders and binders full of stories that you've collected over the years about the city of Sylvan Lake. And, and this has just been your own work. This has been you going through, digging through the archives, learning these stories. Helen Jane, uh, tell us about this collection and, and how that speaks to what other people like, you know, like you and like I and like others in our community can do to protect our local history, to add to our history over time. Well, it's really, really interesting and it's, it's really fun to go back and look at or find the answer to a question that somebody's always asking me. How far back does my house go? How old would my house be? Things like that. Um, so I do have a list of um, from the, the Pontiac Library of the, the streets and the list of people look, who lived here many, many years ago in different time periods. So that's, that's something that many people ask about. But just two weeks ago, my friend Maureen Morrill um, invited us over, my friend Sharon and I, over to her house. And she had two pictures to show me that she couldn't wait to show me that one of them was her, her grandparents. Let me show you. Okay. Sorry. Um, wow. Look at that's that. a picture um, of Maureen's grandparents. And this is a picture, trying to make it straight, of the a hot dog stand that her grandfather built in front of their house. So I showed that I sent, I scanned both of the pictures. I sent them to the historical society and Sue Williams took it upon herself to drive up and down Moss Avenue where this picture was taken. Actually, this is Kigo. This is Kigo history, but she found the house and she knows who lives there. And she gave us more history about the house. So things like that are just fascinating to me, that people, of uh, what the house looks like now. But this um, hot dog stand was about a block off of 
Cass Lake, where people could get out of their boat and walk up to this house where they had a hot dog stand. Now, that was brand new information to me. I had no idea about that. But I love, uh, I've got three binders for um, Whitfield School, uh, which is dear to my heart because I went to Whitfield for seven years from kindergarten through sixth grade, and it was the heart of our community. And that's why we want to save Roosevelt School. <clears throat> it's absolutely imperative that we save that school and it be used for community because we did not have community centers when I was growing up. We didn't until uh, maybe there's my library. Yeah. And um, you can see that is in a closet and they're labeled. They are about different aspects of the city. There's one for the garden club and Parks and Rec, and, they're, and then they also have chronological ones. I, whenever I see something in the paper or something written, I put it in the notebook um, according to what year it was. So we can go back and read that. But um, back to Whitfield. Whitfield School was our community center. It was the heart of the city of, of Sylvan Lake. We walked to school and we walked home for lunch and back to school and back home after at 3.30. We knew our teachers like our friends and they were there for my whole career at Whitfield. It was fabulous. So please save Roosevelt School. Um, it's the heart of Kego too. So anyway, so that was a recent story. And I've also had um, two couples come to my house not uh, last summer, <laughs> and they um, wanted to know about their family who lived here. Well, as it turns out, their father had been a, one of the World War II veterans that um, Mr. Houston wrote to during World War II. I had an original letter, or more than one letter, to give to them that their father had written to Mr. Houston. It's giving me goosebumps right now. Mm -hmm. um, back in the uh, in 1942, and they had never seen this letter. They cried when they saw their father's writing and what he told them about his time in the service and how he missed home and things like that. So that is just thrilling to me to be able to share these kind of stories with other people. And, and it's really important to continue to share these stories all across our four communities in Sylvan Lake, Kegel Harbor, Orchard Lake Village, and the Tri-Cities, and in West Bloomfield Township. That is exactly the kind of thing that the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society is doing as well. And they'll be celebrating their 50th anniversary on Saturday at the Orchard Lake Schools uh, campus. That will be a, a, a 10 a.m. to 12 noon meeting presentation. They'll be getting a special award from some of our local dignitaries as well. And you can join in on that Orchard Lake Schools dining hall from 10 a.m. until 12 noon on Saturday. Helen Jane, I just we've got about 30 seconds left. And so uh, as we wrap up, uh, as we wrap up this discussion, what is the number one suggestion you would make for people if they want to do their part preserving our local history? Well, I would say pictures tell a, a thousand uh, a thousand words. Yes, <laughs> I think I've got it turned around. Anyway, that is the main thing. Pictures tell a story and tell when it was taken, who's in the picture, and what the story is about it. Because that that is just wonderful. But uh, just to share your stories, share how you came to Sylvan Lake, share. How, where your family, your children played, uh, about our parks, about swimming here, about boat rides, whatever. But tell, tell it, write it down so that we can save that for the future. Because people can... are really, really interested. <laughs> they are. There are so many interesting stories. You can find more of those interesting stories on gwbhs.org. Submit your own in their Collecting Memories initiative. And, of course, come on out and learn more at their 50th annual meeting and celebration Saturday of this week, 10 a.m. until noon, at the Orchard Lake Schools Dining Room. And, of course, you can always tell your stories, too, to, in Sylvan Lake to Helen Jane Peters. Helen Jane, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.